While the seasons change in New England, its heart is steadfast. Historic, nostalgic, bucolic, it is the bedrock of America's history where the battle-hardened angler is royalty. The warmth of the people, willing to share the best of themselves to make your adventure better. New England, our nation's first neighborhood. Hold on, who wrote this sappy garbage? This isn't the New England that I experienced. This is my New England. When you arrive in New England, you know you're in New England. It's in the accents and the attitude. That's no surprise, really. Rebellion, not backing down, being the underdog. It all started here. It's part of their DNA. New England is a composite of six states. Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Our focus is more specific. Cape Cod is one of the best known fishing destinations in America. I mean, come on, the name means land of fish. Woods Hole, a small town in Falmouth, is populated by anglers, marine biologists, and damn near anyone whose livelihood connects to the sea. There are two kinds of people in New England. There is the working man, and there is the man that the working man works for. When the people with money or resources or a TV show want adventure or a trophy catch, they find a local to show them the way. These are the guys. Jay Shields, an old friend and former charter captain raised on Boston's North Shore. When it came time to find a fixer in these parts, he was our first call. Then Jay made his first call, Captain John Galvin. There is a culture in the waterman up here, you know, knowing John who's, who's a true waterman here, you know, I, I, yeah, I got it for a little bit, but you know, I basically had a cup of coffee as a guy. Yeah. But like a true waterman like these guys, you, you know, the coolest part about what I do is I step on boats with some of the fishiest people on the planet. And they all have their little nuances, their little tricks, and the way that they adapt and improvise commercially available gear for their unique situations and to run their program more efficiently. I mean, literally, you got a species of fish that gets to a certain size that's so powerful that it can't be caught. And you have to design an advanced technology around that species. And any time that that happens in fishing, you're going to see an explosion of new innovation that's going to trickle down that's going to really enable a ton of new stuff. Young salt, old spirit. In an era of modern day fishing technology, Galvin's methods harken back to a bygone era, like fishing with your gritty grandfather. All pride, no excuses. So th there's a wide variety of species to chase here, but it's, it's not always warm, there's no, yeah. no palm trees. Many times a year, depending on the species, the best time to fish, <laughs> it's gonna be bundled up yeah. like Santa Claus. That's what makes it so fun, yeah. especially getting into the early months or like the late fall months, is fishing in that cold weather. It's almost like you're doing what those before us did. In each fishing community here in New England, whether it's Maine, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, or you know even Montauk, New York, there's still a deep connection with those long before us. A lot of us came up with what we learned from the generation before us. And then the generation before them, there's a proverbial coaching tree. Yeah. yeah. Much like anywhere, but up here, a lot of them, it's like, I don't know, those real salty guys. Still talk about the whalers of Nantucket. 
the swordsmen of Gloucester that just go out in anything. And it's, you, you push the limits. Sometimes it's might not be very smart. But do you feel like it's something they have to do or something they want to do? Both. Yeah. Salt in the veins or, you know, the seas running through the veins. It's, it's what a lot of us it's, feel like we're here to do. Galvin dissects the intricacies of this diverse fishery. Striped bass are more synonymous in Massachusetts and New England yeah. and bluefin. Bluefins, that's the big flashy. You're catching giants. You know, and we have bluefish. In my eyes, one of the most undervalued game fish that we have here. Yeah. They pound for pound, they fight great. They're voracious feeders. They're awesome on top water. Our economies and our fisheries are more lean towards striped bass more than anything. It's the most accessible species that we have here. And no matter where you go, fish are not easy to catch. Yeah. The message from these two is clear. The water is loaded. Come daybreak, Galvin puts a few generations of fishing know-how to work. Rigged up and ready to pounce, we depart McDougal's Marina. It provides direct access to the waters around Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, and Falmouth, where summer views are peppered with buoys and day sailing cruisers. Before wetting a line, let's run through the checklist. The Yeti Flip is a soft cooler for hardcore conditions. Compact, leak-proof, and armed with a shoulder strap. Your hands free as you wade through any conditions. The Penn International and Slammer 3 are engineered to handle salt without impact to the smooth drag system. Costa sunglasses are made of nearly indestructible bio-based resin, so they stand up to any and all conditions. Cutting edge fishing line is superior technology. Spider wire means less breakoffs and more fish to the boat. Yellowfin 36, with its 10 foot beam and capacity to hold 477 gallons, a long day offshore is no problem. On board, the Simrad NSS 12 Evo 2 combines a chart plotter, broadband sonar, and HD structure scan in one touchscreen unit. The yellow fin is powered by triple 300 mercuries. That much big engine power is necessary when covering so much ground. King Sailfish release mounts. Provide them with a picture and KSM will create a beautiful mount that matches your catch down to the smallest detail. Vineyard Sound separates Woods Hole and a string of islands including Cuddyhunk and Naoshan. This morning, the water wears a heavy coat of fog, a most expected fashion choice for New England. Going out to some false albacore, little tunny, fat alberts, albies, whatever you want to call them. Small tunas that come into these inshore waters this time of year. It can be a lot of fun. Shot in there real quick, as quick as you can, rod tip up, recover your slack, get tight to it, throw a little shake in it, and they should pile onto it for you. Nice, Graham. False albacore, aka albies, are a highly sought after species in New England. Just blind casting, right? For South Floridians, they look like your average fresh cut bait. But not up here. This fish is beloved, sporty, beautiful, zebra printed, like tuna with a better outfit. Have nice little footballs. The locals eagerly anticipate their runs each year like a new season of Patriots football. Oh, there we go! <laughs> The thing about New England is dealing with our weather. Any given day, it's, you know, 
We had some sun for a little while. We've got some fog. I don't know what makes it so good, too, though. Hurricane Hermine acts like a squatter, loitering off the coast of New York and New Jersey. While there are stiff winds and currents, the inshore waters are largely protected by the surrounding land masses. Dude, there's some decent sized ones in that pod too, man. Get the triple. Yeah, they're chewing, man. They're a great game fish yeah. up here. This time of year, it really helps with the, you know, brings a lot of people here to chase them, the fly guys, the light tackle guys. And they're fun. And if you're going shark fish or something, they make great bait. It's just a blast to catch. <laughs> I love these fish so much. There's one creature that has a bigger fan base than the Alby or Tom Brady. And it all started with a movie from the 1970s shot right here that made you think twice about taking a summer dip in the ocean. The magnificent, misunderstood Carcharodon carcarius, the great white shark. One of the world's best known shark scientists is in this area, Dr. Greg Skomel. Like Richard Dreyfus from Jaws, but the real deal. Certainly, Jaws was probably, you know, a movie that motivated a lot of people to go out shark fishing. Shark fishing really exploded after that, and that's recreational yeah. fishing for sharks. But it's never been a species easy to target. Dr. Skomel says great whites and the surrounding fisheries go hand in hand. What we're trying to do is manage fish populations along the eastern seaboard, including, you know, specifically Massachusetts, at sustainable levels so that we provide ample opportunities for both recreational and commercial fishermen, while, you know, preserving a healthy biomass. He sees sharks as a vital species to keep healthy as they are critical to a thriving marine ecosystem. We talk about white sharks and sharks in general as being, you know, top predators, apex predators, you know, top of the food web. Perhaps they are more instrumental in controlling the health of the marine ecosystem. Certainly, that's likely the case for white sharks as it is with, with many shark species. So we want to make sure that we keep healthy populations of these animals. There is an interconnectedness to the New England fishery. The sea to the science to the salts. There's also pride. Lots and lots of pride. Sure, there's boasting and some trash talk, but when the fish start piling up, it's hard to argue with their methods. New England is a diverse republic, reaching from the moneyed enclaves of Connecticut to the frosted tip of Maine. Having fished our way across Massachusetts, a course is set for Block Island Sound in Rhode Island, where the promise of false albacore, sea bass, and bluefish awaits. Snug Harbor is quite the scene. It harks back to the old guard with its gritty trimmings and foggy ways. It's home base for Captain Jack Sprangle, a recreational angler by age six, working in a tackle shop at 14. Fast forward to the present, and he's got his own outfit, East Coast Charters. So we don't have the year-round fishing, but when it's on, I fish just about everywhere on the planet. Yeah. It's as good as, if not better, in most places. This particular species is fun. It's kind of got a little cult following around it, but you know, it's all about the migration here. That, the fact that our fish travel is what makes it so great because yeah. they'll all concentrate at once. So instead of a pick throughout the year, you get feast and famine, but the feast is so good it keeps you coming back during the famine. Captain Jack's strategy for Albies is no nonsense. He looks for the right birds, such as terns, to swoop in and attack busting bait on top. Cast into the churn. After that, 
the reel starts screaming and your hands start burning. The march of the Albies has begun. Those are Albies, Jack. Yeah, I think so, man. Those are Albies. I think it's a mix. Yeah. So this whole coastline here is full of jetties and breachways and rips. And we've got one boat kind of cruising to the east for us, looking up and around the corner. And we're going to basically keep crawling west unless we hear otherwise from them and check each jetty, each riptide along the way. Wherever we can find that aggregation of eight is where it's going to be happening. Yeah. So. Right there. Definitely an Alvy. Coming up to the bow. Coming back. Yeah, yeah you saw that right. Jack barehanding an Albi. In case you were wondering if these locals know what they're doing, yeah, they know. We've got enough Albi footage for a feature film. Up next, a good old fashioned mid-Atlantic deep drop. When you're rigged for Albies in New England, shifting gears to bluefish is not a problem. The underappreciated bluefish puts up a solid fight. These fatty, oily scoundrels make for a good meal, a mid-Atlantic species not to be overlooked. Right up! I like my bluefish. Got a jumper in here and everything. That is a perfect giant bait. One day they're a target species for clients, another day they're bait for giant bluefin. Next up, the deep drop for black sea bass. Although it seems pretty basic, there's a skill to it. They Why fight hard, excellent tasting, and the colors on them are amazing. Captain Jack argues that they're one of the best eating fish in the ocean. It's a lot like chasing yellowtail snapper. Find the pod and ring them in. Heading back into Snug Harbor, Captain Jack explains how all these species are connected. Find the bait and catch an albie. Then bluefish make a cameo. After that, change up gear for sea bass. What they eat, where they live, and where they migrate. It's all below the bows. Having spent days waking up before the sun, rigging, reeling, releasing, we're ready for a saltwater species that tastes great and doesn't put up a fight. Cue Dave Ryan. His business, bivalves. A raw bar icon, nature's Brita, the almighty oyster. So these are some oysters if you want to sample a couple. There you go. Thank you, sir. That's amazing. That's a good oyster. Oh, yeah. Oh. Back home in Florida, you pick the oranges right from the trees. In New England, you pick the oysters right from the marsh. In this row, we have a, a series of a row of trays, and those have last year's baby oysters, which are this year's market oysters. And then inside this nursery bag, we have this year's babies. That one crate holds hundreds of growing oysters, and Cape Cod Oyster Company has quite a few crates. 
Look at this farm. A 60 acre plot past the town of Barnstable, flanked by 8,000 acres of salt marsh. Crate after crate after crate. It stretches beyond what the human eye can see. The oyster aquaculture industry in Massachusetts has grown tremendously in the last 10 years. I think total state landings 10 years ago was about 3 million oysters. And we're up in the 40 million oyster a year range now. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's yeah. a big difference. Yeah. Fortunately for us, the national markets have recognized that there's a real sweet spot from, you know, uh, Rhode Island to about mid-coast Maine that just produces the best tasting oysters. Yeah. We get paid better than anybody else in the country for our product. From ankle deep water to a party back at headquarters. Warning, oysters may cause unnecessary slurping montage. With the help of some new friends, we have a cookout with today's take. Oysters on the half shell, sea bass on the grill, cocktails and fireworks. <laughs> Late at night, we head out to a deserted island. Away from the harbor lights, we're exploring in the dark, getting lost for fun, like we're kids again. On the water, they're stoic tough guys barking orders and giving stern looks at a break off. But just below the surface is the heart, the way men used to be made. Not surprising for a fishing community older than the American Revolution. Up here, everyone knows everyone and everyone knows everything. So pipe down, New England is talking.